We now have access to six of the optional extensions released for Luminar Neo, and the latest one in the collection is SuperSharp AI. So in this video, I want to take a look at it and let you guys know my opinion. We'll see if it's any good. So to appreciate what sharpen AI is intended to do, we need to first understand what standard sharpening algorithms do for us. They just look for areas of difference in our photos. So for example, where pixels meet each other, if those pixels are the same, nothing happens. Whereas if you have a difference in terms of color, tonal value, then that is actually gonna be accentuated. So the greater the difference between how bright and how dark the adjacent pixels are, the more that's gonna get accentuated, therefore creating an edge and the illusion of sharp and that's the key, it is an illusion. We're creating the look of sharper edges that didn't exist in our initial photo. Now SuperSharp AI is designed to go a step further using the artificial intelligence, you know, Skylum's neural networks to actually create context, depth maps, all of that good stuff to allow us to correct for actual motion blur in our photos. Because normally standard algorithms are pretty rubbish and hopeless for actually moving removing, not moving, motion blur. Now in the tests I've run, I have found it good for removing motion blur. However, I'm also pleased to report that I've also found it beneficial for just standard lack of focus and it's bringing that back as well. So let me show you a couple of examples and you guys can judge for yourself Let's have a look. Oh, and just quickly, if you don't have the extensions yet, I've got a link in the description below. Now, just to note, these extensions are designed to solve specific photographic problems. You do not need them or require them for Luminar Neo to work as normal as a normal photo editor. So it's entirely up to you whether or not you think it's worth getting these extensions. I've done videos reviewing all of them and I'll put a link to those in the description below so you can make your own mind up. And in terms of quality, they range from the excellent, in my opinion, for HDR merge down to the less than impressive upscale AI. So the next question is, where does, what is it, super sharp? How useful is super sharp AI? Let's take a look. Okay, so to install the extension, we need to come to the top right and click on the little jigsaw puzzle icon with extensions written next to it. That's gonna load up this window here that has your currently installed extension showing. And the sixth one here is super sharp AI. And as you can see, I've already installed it now, but if you haven't, you just click that little button there and that's gonna install it. Now, unlike HDR merge, focus stacking upscale, it does not appear here you're gonna find it in the edit section. And here's our new little friend added underneath noiseless raw in the extensions panel there. So what options have we got? Well, if we open it up in true Luminar style, things are very simple, very easy to use, but that doesn't mean that the underlying technology isn't sophisticated. We've got the amount of sharpening you can apply, low, middle, or high. So let's zoom in here. And as you can see, this image is indeed a little bit soft. I'll come to about 200% so you can see it easier on the video. So I'm just gonna to come to the motion blur section here and just click low. And Luminar is gonna put on its little geometric graphic display for us while it does its calculations. And actually, unlike upscale AI that I found to be very quick in spitting out those two, four, six times enlargements, this one's taking just a little bit longer. So I might pause the video and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so it's finished its calculations. So we've gone from soft to sharp, but as you can see, it's also sharpened the digital noise in my son's face. However, the eyes do look much better, as do the teeth as well. As we move over to my red tomato face, let's have a little look. Okay, before and after. So zoomed in at 200%, which you're not going to be showcasing your photo at that. It doesn't look particularly great, but in terms of the actual, oops, I just closed the tool down, and if that happens, no problem. It's just gonna shift it over, just like any tool when you close it down, it's gonna then become available in the edit section here. So now I have access to my super sharp AI again. So we can see our before, and after, and one of the things that I've found is quite useful to do is actually use the masking effect. Come in, grab the brush, maybe work with a nice bit of softness, and then we can paint in the sharpness only where we want it. Let's do the same on my daughter's eyes and her mouth as well, maybe over her hair. Being very rough and ready, let's have a little look at the before and after. Before and after. This is a very high resolution file, so it's very unlikely that I would be viewing this or printing it any larger than this. So if I'm happy with the sharpness at this resolution, which I am, I'm toggling before and after, and it may be difficult for you guys to see on YouTube, but on my screen, on my monitor, looking at the before and the after, it is actually a big improvement. 
Now one of the great things about these extensions is they're actually designed to work together to improve the overall image quality of your photos. So there's various different photographic problem solving tools that we have available to us. So in this instance, it was quite a noisy image and the super sharp AI was actually sharpening all of that digital noise. And so that's where having access to noiseless AI comes in because I can run that filter first and then run my super sharp AI afterwards to improve the sharpness, but without increasing the noise. Okay, it's just finished processing now and it looks very good actually, um, but it's not the quickest AI tool at our disposal, so it's gonna take a little while to run, but it is worth noting that when I'm recording these videos, not only am I running Neo, but I'm also running two monitors, recording software, and all of that takes a toll on the processor and the memory. And as any of you who run AI-driven photo editing software know, it can be very draining on your system resources. Let's get back to the image and take a look what it's done. Okay, I hope you guys can see this, but here's our soft and noisy file. And when I release the iTool, so here's our before, here's our after, all of the digital noise is gone and the image has been sharpened up as well. I actually flicked the amount over to middle rather than low, which may just be a little bit too extreme. I've gone back to low now. So here's our before, here's our after, before and after. Yeah, I'm really impressed with that actually. And after my less than positive review of upscale AI, I'm really pleased. But to be fair, this image wasn't particularly blurry to start with. So I went out and I actually took some dedicated imagery where I was getting some motion blur of my daughter on the trampoline. I took some photos where I deliberately misfocused and they're the ones that I want to look at next. Okay, let's take a look at this photo where my daughter did her own makeup for Halloween. Pretty good job, I reckon. And who didn't do a pretty good job was dad taking a photo. So I shot this with a 50 millimeter f1.4 and I shot it with the aperture wide open, which is completely unforgiving. As you can see how her eyebrow hairs are nice and sharp and just maybe like a centimeter or two behind where her eye is, it's out of focus, unbelievable. So although this obviously isn't an issue of motion blur, let's see whether super sharp AI can do anything for us. So I probably want quite a strong effect on this. Let's just click high and see what it does. Now while it's calculating that, let's talk about comparative sharpness. So when I first opened up this photo, you might have thought, oh, those eyes look nice and sharp. And that was, okay, it's done its thing fairly quickly on this and it looks pretty good. Skin, not so much, but the eyes look great. So do the lips. And I'm gonna use the masking to bring those features back into the photo. So as with many effects in Luminar Neo, you don't wanna apply it over the whole photo necessarily. You know, putting it on globally isn't necessarily the right answer, but masking it in locally will usually give you a better result because you're in control about where you're applying the effect. And in this example, we're going to benefit from what is known as comparative sharpness. So if you have an item which isn't particularly sharp, but you compare it to something that is very blurry, it, by comparison, it's gonna look sharper than it actually is. And that's probably what happened when I first opened up this photo and you looked at the eyes, you probably didn't realize just how out of focus they were because compared to how quickly the background and her hair drops off into even more blurriness, they probably looked quite sharp. So now if I mask super sharp AI in just over her eyes, over her mouth, I really think this is gonna make this image pop. I've just run the super sharp AI algorithm again, but this time with the middle option selected rather than high. And it's actually given us more of an impactful look. So I'm gonna go for that. I'm not sure why that would be a stronger look than the high option, but it does appear to be. So I'm just going to use that and paint it in currently with 50% opacity. So I'm just going over her eyes, go over her mouth here, maybe even the blood dripping down from the eyes as well. And one more pass over the eyes. What about the eyebrows? No, I think I preferred that how it was before. Let's zoom out a bit and let's look at our before and after, before and after. Look at the dynamic pop that we've given to the eyes from before and after, and even the lips as well, the sort of detail in the blood and all that going on there, that's certainly been enhanced. So far, the sharpening that I've actually demonstrated isn't really what the tool was designed for, but in these examples and other experiments that I've run, I found it actually to be really beneficial. But what it was designed for was to deal with motion blur. So I've got my daughter on the trampoline, jumping around, got a load of photos. I've already run a series of tests. The results have been excellent. I've been really impressed with them. So let me show you just one example so you guys can get a feel for what it's capable of doing. Okay, let's scroll down to my daughter jumping around. A demo on this one, but I actually want to get a little bit more blur going on. 
And this image is ideal because as you can see, we've got some up and down motion blur going on, as you can see in her eyes and her teeth here. So let's come into the edit module, open up Super Sharp AI, and let's go for the low motion blur option to start with and just see what it does. Okay, and it's done its thing on the low setting. So here was our before, very blurry up and down motion blur. And here's our after, before and after. It's certainly an improvement. So here's our before, here's our after. But we don't have to settle with our option. We could try middle as well. All right, so here was our before, here's our after. That's what it looks like with the middle option. It's certainly a lot sharper. Um, what if we go to 50% so we can actually get a sense of what this image would look like overall. Here's our before. Here's our after, that is a lot sharper. That was how it was looking with the low option. That's with medium. As this is our last comparison, let's test the high option as well. So although it takes a little while to process these results, once you have them, you can flick between the low, middle and the high and do a comparison, which is quite nice. And that's what I'm gonna do now. So here was our original. Here is our low option. Here's our middle option in the game before and after. And what I think is probably my favorite, here is our high option, here's our before, here is our after. Before and after. Okay, here we are at 100% before and after. Okay, here we are at 100% before and after. So the low, middle and high, they've definitely each got their own distinct look and each may be appropriate for a different amount of blur that's going on in your photo. Interestingly, when we were zoomed in, I found the middle option to be the stronger of the three. I'm not really not sure why that is, um, but when you zoom back to the size that you might actually be more likely to print out or even uh, send it out and upload it onto the internet, it actually looked much less aggressive at that kind of resolution and much um, more pleasing to the eye as well. So I think with a little bit of playing around, this tool can actually be really useful if you suffer from quite a lot of blurry photos. To be honest, I don't, um, oh, go me, aren't I awesome? But I mean, if you take blurry photos, my approach is I normally take one, if I'm out of focus, I'll take one that's then in focus and get it right. If I take a blurry shot of something going past, I'll try and get it going again and I'll get it pin sharp. So my blurry stuff normally ends up in the bin anyway. But if you've got that moment and you capture this shot and it's your only opportunity and for some reason it's blurry, this tool could be an absolute godsend for you. So it's part now of that collection of six extensions, which are all sort of working together to allow us to level up our overall image quality. And that's really nice to have those options in Luminar. As I say, a lot of people are not very happy because they're like, well, now we have to pay for more and this. You don't, you don't need these extensions. Um, like Topaz has a whole specialist catalog of these kind of extensions, upscale, sharpen, um, denoise, all of that, and they're dedicated things that plug into Photoshop as an additional thing to improve the functionality, and you pay for them. It's a separate thing that you pay for. It's the same with Luminar Neo. Without them, Luminar Neo still functions, and for a lot of you, you may just be happy, just keep using Luminar Neo and you'll be fine and dandy with your editing. But if you have specific needs, like you want to try focus stacking or you want HDR merge, which again, used to exist as a separate program, Aurora, which you had to buy. So if you want access to that extra stuff that the developers and coders have worked on to create, um, you gotta pay for it because they need paying. Um, that's the bottom line. So like it or not, that's how it is. If you do want to get hold of it and you don't have it yet, you can help me out using the link in the description below. It doesn't cost you any more, just helps me keep creating free content, reviews, tutorials, all of that stuff for you guys. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.